Well, first off, thanks for joining us as part of the Portuguese SIG in our online virtual ACTFL 2020. Uh, my name is Orlando Kelm. I'm going to talk a little bit today about the effects of social media and how they kind of mess up our idea of study abroad. So let's start with a reality check. You know, because of social media and the way it mixes with study abroad, we never really disconnect from home anymore. Think about it. When you're abroad, every day you check Facebook to tell your friends and your family what you're doing. Every day you check Instagram and add photos to it. You can even continue to watch the same TV shows and movies that you always watch because you have access to Netflix and Hulu. And because of your Twitter feed, you're continually getting new updates and news from everything around the world like you know, always would. And you can take your choice. Try WhatsApp, try FaceTime, try Google Hangout, try Zoom, any one of these. You can participate in calls and video conferences. And the first thing we worry about the second we land from a, in a foreign country is, is my international plan going to work? Can I still get my phone? Can I still get my messages? And I got to get to Wi-Fi as fast as I can. No, so the question is, is study abroad still effective for learning a foreign language when we now have this new challenge, especially in the programs that are short term? If we're only going to be in country for six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks, is that really enough time if we never disconnect? Now, sometimes we kind of take a step back and we say, yes, but it's still a culturally rich experience. Well, is that enough? Is it enough to have a culturally rich experience when really we state our objective is language proficiency gains? So our bottom line here is that we have a new challenge. Social media is not the bad guy, but mere study abroad doesn't imply automatic benefits in language acquisition, even though that's how we promote it. What we really need is to help learners with new strategies, how to take advantage of a language learning experience abroad, despite all of these things that distract us along the way. You know, one of the advantages of learning abroad is that we are exposed to natural exchanges. We follow the scripts when we're talking. And when you're abroad, we're exposed to these scripts in normal daily settings. It can be at the bakery, at a restaurant. Wherever we go, we are going to see those normal scripts happen. And when we have interactions abroad, it kind of focuses us to focus on meaning and communication. Because in the heat of the moment, all of a sudden, we're not worrying about form anymore. We are concentrating on the meaning. Now, there's some positive aspects to that that happen in a study abroad experience that don't happen in any other way. Also, one of the advantages of being abroad is now our communication is connected with local happenings. It could be a holiday. Things that are on the news is what everybody's talking about. Current events become the events we're involved with. At the same time, we have new context when we are abroad. When we go to a restaurant, we're in that restaurant. When we go shopping, we really are shopping. When we go to museums or participate in tours, all those sort of things have a context in the way that they wouldn't normally. And so those are some of the reasons why we promote that it is worth it to be abroad as part of that language learning experience. At the same time, we have to admit that there are some advantages or at least some aspects of studying at home that have its own merit as well. You know, sometimes it is just simply nice to slow down and say, I've got to study adjectives today. And that grammar-focused study can really happen anywhere. And that's an advantage of something we can do at home just as much as abroad. You know, there is some validity to the idea that you need to learn how to pack your parachute before you jump out of the plane. And so when is that appropriate moment to go abroad versus when is it more appropriate to be in the learning how to pack your parachute phase? And also studying at home gives us the opportunity to check our resources, go back to the textbooks, go back to the dictionaries, go back to our materials. All those sort of things we cannot minimize as an important aspect of studying 
which can easily happen at home. So what I'd like to recommend here for the next few moments is suggestions we can give to learners of a foreign language who plan on going abroad because we need to prepare them for that experience of how do you combat the distraction? How do you take advantage of all those things that being abroad can offer you knowing that you're really not going to disconnect 100% from your old world and your old life back home? And so I'm going to talk about seven areas that have suggestions for those who are going abroad or preparing to go abroad. So the first one here is this idea of noticing. Uh, you know, how do we get our input and turn it into something we internalize? And a lot of that is just our concentration. We need people to figure out how can I analyze the language around me to be more adept at hearing things. You know, we need to listen to how people say things as opposed to how you would simply translate it. Because our tendency in a foreign language is to translate something with a 10, 15 words, and then we hear a native speaker express the exact same idea in two words, or with a specific intonation. That we need to teach people to be aware of and to listen for. And as I already mentioned, this idea of scripts. When we go into a restaurant, there are things that native speakers know how to say, know how to ask, know how to clarify know how to make an excuse, notice how to justify themselves. All those sort of things, if we are more aware of it, it seeps in more. Also, when speaking, we have those little extra words. We have false starts, we have fillers, we have tags. And as we listen to the way that native speakers incorporate those into their speech, it becomes part of our speech as well. One of the real keys to studying abroad is to document the things you hear. Write stuff down and then later on when you're with a native speaker bring out those notes and ask about it, talk about it, make it a point of departure in your study as well to share what you've been observing with others. These are things that we can do that causes our input to become something we notice and turn it into intake. Suggestion number two there's always going to be a balance between time we spend on grammar versus time that we spend on orally talking about things. Now of course a focus on form does give us some initial quick gains but over time that's going to limit us if we don't get the fluency that takes over. At the same time if all we do is increase in fluency with no checks on quality we're going to end up creating bad habits that are hard to get rid of down the road. And so this means that we can divide up a little bit our efforts too. There's no problem with saying, I am right now focusing on personal study, or I'm focusing right now on just plain old talking, and I'm not going to stress too much about form at this moment. Another thing that helps is to divide your language learning study into the area of, is this for socialization? Is this for communication or is this for focus on form? Because each one works well and sometimes socialization frankly is more important than communication or communication is more important than form or form is more important than the socialization. Give each one their due. Certain aspects of language learning happen in stages. We've got to give them their time. And you know, so for example, we learn gender from day one but gender is still a challenge years into our language study. In some level, it's with us forever. And so we've just got to be willing to admit that just because I studied it doesn't mean I got it. On the other end, there are certain aspects of language learning that only happen when you're at the appropriate level. We can't expect to really understand advanced level concepts when our proficiency is down at an intermediate level. Give it its time. When you become an advanced speaker, those advanced ideas will then gel a lot better. Suggestion number three, learn how to use circumlocution because there are going to be tons of things you can't say. At a lower level, if you can't say it, it stops you. But at an intermediate level, if you can't say it, you got to learn to get around it. You know, describe what you want, give examples if you want. 
uh, ask what's the opposite of this or it's like this but only bigger or what's the difference between this and that suggestion number four listening writing and speaking are are very different skills and they don't automatically help one another you know we often study vocabulary for example at a word level but you almost never listen to words at a word level and that's why it sounds like people are talking so fast because they are using those words in a sentence and you're trying to parse out every word be aware that when we learn to write it doesn't automatically mean we can speak and vice versa that also means that we've got to spend a good hunk of our time predicting and guessing because nobody understands a hundred percent at some point you've got to go with the flow and keep on plugging along and hoping you're going to catch up on the things that you didn't understand 100 percent that's just natural learning suggestion number five is just buckle down and study will you you know good old-fashioned elbow grease memorize those words practice those verbs manipulate those sentences just study will you you know take on that responsibility for learning don't wait for the teacher to tell you what to do be an active learner an active listener an actor doer an active practicer an active experimenter take it on just go for it now don't be a perfectionist you're gonna make mistakes along the way but part of language learning means you gotta study you gotta work to get it I think too often we just go the, the simple route thinking there's gotta be an easier way no you gotta study too suggestion number six part of being an active learner means looking for ways to engage ways to practice ways to interact you know one of the great things of being a foreigner is you get the foreigner pass the foreigner card says you can ask about everything you don't understand things that you would never ask normally you have the right to ask about because you are not the local that really gives you an opportunity next mix it up talk with little kids talk with elderly talk with adults talk with young people talk with professionals store cooks taxi drivers service providers doormen talk to everybody mix it up next repeat your same conversation over and over again you can talk to the doorman about a specific topic and then talk to your host mom about the same topic and then talk to the taxi driver about the same topic and then talk to your teacher about the same topic repeating topics over and over again with new people is a great way to interact and practice at the same time just accept that miscommunications are going to happen sometimes you're just going to have to smile and realize that that communication didn't happen move on to the next one my final recommendation and suggestion relates to the idea of motivation and personality you know your personality is kinda who you are feel free to be yourself you know sometimes people think that the outgoing person learns better than the reserved shy person I don't buy that if you're reserved and shy you're reserved and shy don't all of a sudden think you have to be this loud party going no be yourself I think a person who can be themselves will have more success than the person who tries to be somebody they're not just because they're learning a foreign language and as to motivation again intrinsic instrumental I don't think it matters if you want to learn a language to become rich or learn a language to fall in love with somebody whatever go for it run with whatever motivation is for you I don't think one is better than the other so again this presentation was designed to say social media is not a bad thing but it is totally making it a different experience for those that go abroad because of that we need a new strategy we have got to face the reality that those distractions affect the immersive experience when abroad but I'm not ready to give up on the expectation that study abroad offers a lot of benefits for gains for, language, for foreign language acquisition. So let's prepare students with these new strategies to increase the success of those language gains when they study abroad. That's it. 
I'm Orlando Kelm from the University of Texas. Let's get ready for another study abroad experience.